Hey guys, welcome to my second instalment of uh, my vlog. Uh, this is number two. Uh, today I thought I would talk about uh, how I base my models. Um, I base my models for gaming. It's nothing spectacular. It's quite simple. Um, uh, it, what I'm saying is it's not right or wrong the way I do it. Uh, however you do it, it might be right for you. Uh, this is right for me, uh, and it's fine. It's quite simple, quick to do, and the results are easy to uh, replicate. Uh, I'm just comparing um, an old Space Wolf I've recently painted, painted to the uh, Dren Redblade uh, Deathwatch Marine. And here's the uh, Iron Hands version that I recently completed as well. He was in the first video I did. Uh, the sculpts on these are absolutely brilliant. I really like them. There's so much detail. Uh, you can see they share a lot of the paint recipes. So um, the uh, all the straps and leather are the same colour. The blacks are the same colour. Uh, this is the Citadel Texture Paint Armageddon Dust. Um, there's several texture paints you can get. Uh, it's basically like a slimy wet sand. Uh, as you can see there, it's it's not the nicest of looking things, but um, it it goes on. And once it's dry, it just looks like a lumpy, sandy textured area. Uh, this is the uh, Citadel texture spatula. Uh, it's got a thick end on one end and a thin end on the other. And you literally just scrape out a little bit of the slimy wet sand and just spread it out over the base. You can do this with a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, don't use your best paintbrush. Um, but I really like this tool. Uh, it works a treat. It's, you can get quite nice lumpy results or flatten it out and, and uh, yeah. I go through this paint quite a lot. Um, it is expensive uh, to base an entire army this way. Um, so you might not want to do it like this. Uh, that, that is a downside to this way. Um, but I do like the idea that it's kind of really lumpy and you know, I get the same colour every time. And Not that you wouldn't use in normal paint, but... Uh, the traditional way to base uh, gaming models is to use um, PVA glue and sand and you, I, I used to do it that way and I used to when I assembled the model I would glue sand and little stones and pebbles and stuff to the bases uh, and then I would undercoat the model and the textured base and then I'd just paint the base whatever colour I wished uh, when I got to the end of the model so as you can see here, it's uh, nice and lumpy and not smooth, and and that's what I really like about this stuff. It's more realistic. It gives you a really uneven texture. Just using the fin end now to um, poke in around the feet, and don't worry if a little bit goes on the feet because it's more realistic that way. He wouldn't have old ultra clean boots. Uh, the other colours you can get uh, in this range are a dark brown, a light brown, a white, a grey, and I think there's a green as well. I'm almost sure there's a green. Just clean off the end of the spatula with a tissue. Look after your tools, and they'll look after you. Uh, I'm just using my finger to wipe around the edge just to get away any stray uh, lumpy texture off of the base rim so it keeps the base rim nice and smooth.
Um, I paint my base rims with Steel Legion Drab. Uh, it's a nice generic brown. It's not too dark, not too light. Uh, here's a top tip for you. Uh, use the bristle protectors from your brush brushes um, to prop open your paint lids. Works a treat. So I'm just using a large brush here to uh, paint the base edge. I don't tend to go over it multiple times. I don't like the brush marks. So it's literally a quick thin coat. And then we'll let that dry. Now the textured paint does take a while to dry. On its own it could be upwards of an hour. If you uh, have a radiator or a very hot computer, I know my iMac gets really hot. I sometimes put the models on top of my iMac and um, let them dry up there and uh, it, that speeds things up to about around 20 minutes. Um, got, I've got the Citadel Medium Dry Brush here. This is actually a, a really good brush. Uh, I'm really impressed with uh, their dry brushes. Um, I just wipe off some of the paint, uh, which in this case is Screaming Skull, and then I just dab off the excess onto a tissue, and then I just uh, draw the brush backwards and forwards over the, the rough texture to, to add some highlights, to uh, brighten it up in places. Very simple to do, uh, but it really helps. So I'm just repeating the process here. And that's going on nicely. Um, I only gave the base rim one coat. Uh, now that was because I knew with the dry brushing it gets messy so I may have got some more I may have got Screaming Skull on the base edge uh, and in which case I'm, the second coat of Steel Legion Drab will tidy that up so that's just about done I think it's looking okay yep happy with that Do you ever find yourself just sometimes looking at your model? You've you've done a little bit, and then you just feel yourself like catch yourself for a couple of minutes, just sat there staring at at the model, taking in all the the sculpting and the paintwork you've done. And I know I do. Uh, always clean your brushes well. Make sure they're okay. Don't worry too much about keeping a tip on the dry brush because um, it's quite a ragged, rough kind of brush anyway. Uh, back to my large size 3 Kalinsky Sable brush. We're going to paint on the second coat of Steel Legion Drab now. Um, you can water it down, but because it's just a base edge, I just don't bother really. Um, obviously, if you water it down, you would get better results, but this is fine for me. As I say, these are tabletop standard for an army uh, for my army in fact um, I only tend to paint for myself so alright he's done okay so the next step is to add some uh, tufts of straw and some dead grass so we have a uh, Mordheim turf and dead grass um, I don't know if these are still current products you can buy from Games Workshop. Um, I've had these a while and they do last a while. Um, as you can see I'm, I'm down to a few of he these uh, tufts of grass. They they are, these ones, the last ones left are quite large. Um, so what I do, as you can see here, I'll just place it on there and that is large. That is, that's too big for me. Um, and I think the reason why these are lasting so long is because 
they're so big, uh, and I'm chopping them up to make smaller tufts. So I'm just using a pair of scissors here to chop off uh, little pieces to the size I want. And I just want a couple, I don't want to cover the base in them. So two's fine. Put the scissors down, and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just tweaking them into like almost like paintbrush bristles, you know, they're just so they stand up a little better. Just manipulating them. Okay, that's good. Uh, super glue, uh, Gorilla Glue isn't my new favourite super glue, it's fantastic. This stuff is brilliant, I highly recommend it. Um, I've always found Games Workshop super glue to be weak. I'm sure it's because they, you know, their target audience could be quite young children, so I don't believe they use the strongest of glues. Um, that's what I found in my experience. But this stuff is brilliant, I recommend it. Uh, so I've just added a blob of glue to the bottom and tapped it on. Uh, using something firm, I'm using a sculpting tool, uh, I'm just going to push that tuft in onto the base so that glue just grabs the texture and there we go. And then just tweak out the bristles, get a good arrangement. There you go. Really nice. staring at the model again right put that down come on next one so we just grab the end uh, so it shows the gummy bottom that's not actually sticky so that won't stick anything you have to add the glue there we go and just place that there just randomly on the base don't always try and do these things randomly don't be organized don't be don't make a pattern, don't do anything that looks man-made, always be random, it will look better and more realistic. So we're just pushing that down, tweaking out the bristles of the tuft of grass, and yeah, that's looking good. I must stop staring at that, come on. Okay, next up we have the dead grass. Uh, this is a very different approach. Um, we won't use the super glue for this. Instead, we're going to use PVA glue. This is just cheap PVA glue from a, a local hobby store. You can use wood glue instead if you've got that line around. It's the same kind of stuff. Uh, you'll want to use a really old brush. Get an old knackered brush that won't hold a point anymore. Like this one. You see, it's not very good. And just add a few blobs in places. Once again, random. Uh, clean your brush, even though it's old, it's always worth cleaning it so the glue doesn't go rock hard. Um, right, now you can actually use this tray to put the model in. And this is really nice, this uh, box, because it's big enough to get quite large models in. And uh, you don't end up with little pieces of grass everywhere, all over your workstation. So this keeps everything nice and tidy. Uh, I'm just using a flat end of a sculpting tool just to pat it into the glue. Now you can use your finger, but I just find this easier, more accurate. Um, now my next tip here is to get the grass to stand up, is to flick the bottom of the base. While the glue is wet, this will make it stand up more. It will also knock off any loose pieces. Oh, dropped it. And um, yeah, so 
that will make it stand up much better. And there you go. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, and, it, and if you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments. Uh, please subscribe, and don't forget to check out the Paint Your Game support group on Facebook, and uh, Tower Painters, all in the links below. Thanks, see ya!